according to the webinar program, we still have two more presentations about protection methods. The next one is about corrosion inhibitors for steel rebars and will be presented by Maria João Correia. Maria João Correia is a researcher at ONEC developing activity in the materials department on the characterization and durability of metallic materials, diagnosis, prevention, monitoring and protection of corrosion, fractography and failure analysis. So, Maria João, please. First of all, I would like to thank you uh, the invitation to participate in this initiative. I also want to acknowledge all the authors involved in the preparation of the section on corrosion inhibitors included in the guide. I will start with a brief introduction to corrosion inhibitors and afterwards I will also address all relevant fields uh, of the protection and repair with corrosion inhibitors, um, such as, for example, design, execution, quality control, monitoring, and maintenance. I will finally finish with a case study which intends to illustrate some of the common practices of protection and repair with corrosion inhibitors. A corrosion inhibitor is a chemical substance that decreases the corrosion rate uh, by being absorbed on the surface of the steel or chemically modifying it, by changing the corrosion potential of the rebar, or by inducing passivity. Generally, the corrosion inhibitor controls the anodic areas of the reinforcement. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, corrosion inhibitors are used for preventing the corrosion or for repairing its related damage. Uh, they are often used with other protection methods of reinforcement corrosion, and they are special advantages for their low cost and easy application with minimum intervention. There are several methods uh, available uh, as these mentioned here, for example, treating uh, the surface of the reinforcement in the patch repair, applying coatings with active pigments, or chemical changing the surface of the steel uh, by forming uh, or forming a passive film over it. The corrosion inhibitor's performance is affected by their properties, as well as both by the environmental and concrete characteristics. For example, migrating corrosion inhibitors are affected by obstacles to migration, being not recommended where migration towards the reinforcement is prevented or inhibited. The anodic inhibitors are affected by the concentration of corrosive species, and generally uh, the inhibitor's efficiency uh, is affected by the corrosion propagation, by severe conditions, or by concrete cracking. Corrosion inhibitors are classified in organic or inorganic according to their chemical nature. In admixed inhibitors or migrating inhibitors, if they are mixed with or applied on hard concrete, or in anodic, cathodic, or mixed according to their mechanism of action. Uh, for example, uh, you can see that the anodic inhibitors act on the uh, dissolution reaction of the steel, while the cathodic ones act uh, on the reduction reaction or oxygen reduction reaction. They act by different mechanisms, but they both intend to reduce the corrosion rate. Uh, although no special equipment being generally requ required for admixed corrosion inhibitors and that conventional sprays, rollers or brushes are commonly used for migrating corrosion inhibitors and coatings, the equipment should always satisfy the manufacturer's recommendations. General requirements, roles, and qualifications are applied to the stakeholders according to the relevant standards. 
the owner should establish the requirements and deliver information on the structure. The design uh, should have the knowledge on design, maintenance and repair of concrete structures. The contractor should have the knowledge, skill, equipment and resource to execute the work according to the requirements. And the user is recommended to implement a maintenance strategy with special care to corrosion control and the monitoring plan. The condition assessment uh, is essential to verify the structure's durability, performance and rel reliability. A plan should be followed, including planning of methods and procedures for investigation, assessment and prediction of the duration progress, evaluation of structures condition and maintenance history, and decision making on action and recording. From the usual procedures and methods uh, of assessment, a special attention should be given, for example, to specifying critical damage, assessing the defects, including their extent and expected propagation rate and causes, as well as their consequences, and uh, appraising the need or the opportunity for further protection. Uh, depending on the decision of restoring the design service life of the element or of the structure in a single operation or opting for repeated maintenance or reapplied repair, the critical factors uh, on the service life of corrosion inhibitors are uh, the performance criteria and areas of concern and the deterioration mechanisms, uh, condition level, deterioration rates, and progress and related effects on performance. The reported service life of corrosion inhibitors is usually 10 to 15 years, although uh, this period of time is affected by the inhibitor's properties, mechanism of action, and other factors re related with environment exposure conditions and concrete properties. Expertise uh, in corrosion assessment, control, and prevention is recommendable uh, for establishing the mechanisms of corrosion inhibition and for prediction of the corrosion inhibitor's long-term performance. Uh, the decision uh, on design relies on the specificity and condition of the structure, on the established requirements and criteria, as well as on assessment results, uh, methods, and properties of materials, products, and systems. Uh, usual assumptions include corrosion performance and related influencing factors, and no deterioration and adverse reactions over time. Manufacturers or the recommendations and system trials should also be considered uh, for the design. Um, and general requirements normally include uh, sufficient concentration of corrosion inhibitors, no adverse effects on concrete properties, and stable inhibitor concentration for the long term. A detailed execution plan based on the design procedure and ex execution environment and timings is required. This should generally follow the manufacturer's recommendations uh, regarding application quality and quality control, besides including general requirements, such as, for example, the condition of the substract, the environmental conditions, the characteristics of both existing and repair materials and their compatibility, and other, other specific ones such as those related with the suitable preparation of the substracts, the application of materials, products, and systems, the quality control of the work, uh, and the maintenance following, following completion of the repair. System tries, trials are also recommendable for proof of the corrosion uh, inhibitors if effectiveness. Uh, relevant specifications include uh, following the manufacturer's recommendations 
and uh, comparing uh, uh, during the testing of the systems, comparison of the test results with the relevant performance requirements in project specification, and the demonstration of performance for the long term use. Uh, there are several methods uh, suitable to study the efficiency and performance of inhibitors. These include uh, uh, immersion or exposure tests, uh, for example, followed by visual inspection and open circuit potential monitoring, or by non-destructive or destructive electrochemical tests, as well as other complementary uh, microscopic observation or spectroscopic tests. For example, you can see here in these figures um, some examples of the results of the electrochemical tests or uh, the setup here uh, used in system trials. You can see here uh, the difference between an active and a passive behavior of the steel, while in these figures here you can see, you can observe uh, the morphology of the corrosion products and also to appraise on their chemical nature. Usually, typical repair procedure includes uh, uh, the suitable preparation of the substrate so that the products and systems can be correctly applied. Examples of usual procedures. Uh, for concrete or reinforcement preparation include, for example, the removal of weak damage or deteriorated concrete, the concrete cleaning, the removal of rust scale concrete or other uh, material without damaging the reinforcement. And uh, I just want to say that it, it is also very frequent that other repair methods and different corrosion inhibitors may also be used for improving the efficiency of the repair. As regards the quality control, uh, the requirements shall meet with the acceptance criteria, such as, for example, uh, on the properties of the substract, uh, on the products and systems, uh, on the conditions of their application, and on the final products of the hardened products and systems uh, which are also specially relevant. It is also important to attend to the manufacturer's recommendations. And uh, after the intervention, it is also advisable a special attention to the reinforcement corrosion resistance uh, being a recommendable uh, the advice of experts due to the specificity of the testing methods and to the diversity of factors factor which, which can affect the results. Uh, testing and monitoring techniques should be agreed uh, for durability and performance assessment. By periodic visual inspection with non-destructive testing and continuous remote sensing are the most common strategies for corrosion monitoring, but a corrosion control plan is recommended. A maintenance plan should include the design service life of the structure, uh, the identification of each area with a shorter design service life, the plan for inspection and testing, uh, the specification for monitoring, and the statement of precautions or restrictions. It can also include case-specific information on repair systems and methods, construction materials characteristics, environmental conditions, and actions. The post-intervention documentation includes records of the protection and repair methods, carried out documentation of quality control and assurance requirements completed during the execution and instructions on inspection and maintenance to be undertaken during the, the remaining design, design life of the structure. 
The case study is the structural uh, rehabilitation of a chloride contaminated concrete silo, which was awarded of excellence by the International Concrete Repair Institute in 2009. Uh, this rehabilitation was made about 20 years of service life uh, in a severe environment. Um, after uh, the structure underwent three previous interventions. The condition assessment of the structure has included uh, several testing um, techniques, as for example, uh, the reinforcement cover thickness, the carbonation dip, which is in some cases higher than the cover thickness, and the chloride profile, uh, some of the results are presented here, uh, which indicate very high chloride contents as can be observed. Uh, the project um, specified the repair of the anodic zones, uh, the application of migrating corrosion inhibitors and the overall external protection with a coating against, against carbonation and chloride penetration. Um, it has also specified the system trial of the concrete surface coating. The execution included uh, the concrete removal uh, and the sandblasting of the exposed reinforcement to, to remove the corrosion products, followed by the application of dry mix sprayed concrete uh, spraying of the migrating corrosion inhibitor and application of an acrylic paint. Uh, the quality control has included control of supplies and processes, inspection and testing in the course of the works and in the final work product, and uh, the respective recording. Monitoring has been used for uh, assessment and predictive purposes. Um, sensor for macro cell current, open circuit potential, concrete electrical resistance and temperature uh, were installed in four repaired areas and in the nearby non-repaired non concrete, as you can see here in this figure. Uh, here I show some uh, of the monitoring data, data results. Uh, uh, in the repaired areas. Uh, in this figure, you, you can see some of the repaired areas and here I indicate where uh, the sensors were installed. Uh, from the results, uh, we can see uh, the repassivation of the rebars from the open circuit potential shifting, the low, the low galvanic currents, and that the electrical resistance uh, shows a pattern compatible with the seasonal variation of the temperature and of the rainfall. I will finish by thank you. Uh, thank you all for your attention and by acknowledging the metallic materials unit uh, from LNEC and STAP. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Junqueira, for your excellent presentation.